Hello, welcome. I'm going to start here with the Fisher Price Movie Viewer. This is a handheld device to watch kids' movies, essentially. And it's not unlike a Viewmaster, it's, but instead of still images, you get animated images. So what you do, you stick a cartridge in here. You watch the video through this eyepiece. Of course, you have to manually make the video work. You, you turn this. So the speed of the animation will depend on how fast you turn this. You can also rewind. And this is a focus dial. And of course, the plastic here is just to let some natural light in to light up the video. So this was released in 1973 originally. Fisher Price continued to release it, I think, until 1987. It seems to be when the last cartridge was released. However, you can still buy this today. They re-released it in like a classic toy line, Fisher Price, but they don't have the original cartridges. I mean, you can acquire them, of course, used because most of them feature licensed characters. So the license w would have expired a long time ago. So what I could tell is they sell this. Well, it's sold. I could only find it at Walmart's website. Doing research, that popped up. I couldn't find it at any other retailers. So they sell it for about 25 bucks. Just this with two cartridges, but the cartridges are just generic. There's like one letters one and one numbers one, so I think to get the more interesting videos, you gotta go buy the used ones. So this is what they look like. They're six inches tall, they're very light. This port part here next to the dial, when you push it in, so then you know it goes into these little holes so that when you turn it, this turns, and that's what turns the movie. This one here is Mickey Mouse and the Giant. And I'll put it in, but you can't watch it through this. I can't, there's no way to show you that. But I'll show you videos later in the theater. So it just slides in there, you turn it. And it makes a lot of clicking noises, but that's it. Of course, like I said, they're silent. It'd cost a lot more if they put audio on these things. So it's mostly just images moving. I did notice Winnie the Pooh had a few subtitles, so I don't know how many have that. I don't think very many at all. You mostly just have to use your imagination to pretend they're speaking. So I have a lot of cartridges. Disney is just one of the companies they license, Fish Price license, license from. So I have a lot of Disney. That is the most, they made the most Disney cartridges as well. I've got a few Sesame Street, and I'm not sure how to show them all. I mean, they're, they're sla the labels are nice, but that's all you're really going to see. And they're flat on the table, so. As long as Mickey Mouse, there's Dumbo, Fox and the Hound, The Rescuers. I mentioned Winnie the Pooh. There's Pinocchio. Goofy's Glider and Mickey's Trailer. This one here, unfortunately, the dial broke, so I can't play it. It says Lonesome Ghosts. Like this plastic piece, it was partially on when I pulled these out of storage and it was just crumbling. It just came off. And it might be possible to, I'm not sure how these come apart, but possible to replace the plastic dial with one of the, like the newer cartridges they make or just. Get another used one. Now, I did lose the labels on some of these. So I put my own labels on them. Nothing special to look at. They also made Snow White and Bambi. Yeah, the, the labels can dry out and fall off. And then I guess I lost them. So these are Sesame Street. Now, these are the only small labels I have. You'll notice these three down here are much smaller than this one. I believe the 1973 releases all had small labels, and the way the cartridge is made, there's like a kind of like a divot, or like it drops in a little bit. So, so it makes sense that the labels wouldn't be too long, but then they made the labels really long, where they extend past that. It's awfully large, but it is nice to see the images. I don't know when I acquired mine, but I wasn't born until 1975, so. 
that's less likely my parents bought most of these around 1980. Then, unfortunately, I don't have labels on the Looney Tunes ones either. This is on the Tweety Bird and a Bugs Bunny one. Aside from these, Looney Tunes, Disney, and Sesame Street, they also have a few Spider Man, some Peanuts with you know Charlie Brown and Snoopy. Notice there was one Pink Panther one. Might be a few other random things. I do have a box for one of them. It's a repeat of Mickey Mouse and the Giant. The odd thing is, is this is the box for Big Bird's birthday party, which I also have. But I don't think I ever removed this from the box. It must have just been uh, mispackaged. And this is like, like I said, probably 1980s packaging. I'm sure the packaging and prices changed over time. This has a price tag of $2.99. Which I guess is a decent price. I don't know. I try to think of what else would cost around that. Maybe a Star Wars action figure. So $3 a pop. Probably a little less than the 70s when they first released. Alright, so now the main item is the movie viewer theater, which is a bit bulkier here. And I know these probably look a little dirty, but this stuff is 40 years old. <laughs> And was played with, so I mean, I wiped them down, but they're beat up a little bit, but they'll work. So, this is the theater. Now, you still have to turn it manually, as the same thing here. It does plug in, I have it plugged in right now, the cord, but all that does no audio, no automatic movie playing. All that does is turn on a light bulb inside, which I will do right now. And so that lights up, you know, the, the image, whereas the hand viewer, you know, natural light just goes through the plastic. This regards a light bulb to make it a bit more, you know, bigger and vibrant because the picture image is much bigger than what you get in the viewer. So on the front, this is a screen you can watch the videos on. I'll stick a cartridge in, but I don't know, it might be a little too bright in here to see it. No, looks like you can see it all right. So it's just an image moving around. Now, notice it's a little dark over here. I damaged it. I seem to have a habit of breaking things. And if you watch the other videos, I broke a transformer, broke a Tootsie toy. I think I've broken some other things. What I did, I took this apart just to look inside and clean out some dust and whatever. I tried cleaning a mirror piece and for some reason it turned black on me like just half of it so this doesn't look as bad in person but the camera doesn't pick it up as well it's just toward that edge it doesn't get enough light so the piece that broke is on the side you can't really see it here well yeah you can see it through the window it rotates yeah you can see on this edge I don't know how well that picks up it's black instead of a reflective coating so what this does is it tells you if you want to watch it on the screen so it would go on this screen but if you turn it the other way it's a wall projector which comes out of this little window here it does have a stand too and that's all you do it's a it's a little piece of a, like a mirror so when you turn it it takes the image and either projects it this way or reflects it to another mirror. I know I can't really fit, but the mirror, other mirror is back here. So it bounces off of that mirror and comes up to the window. And the top just has a vent because the light bulb can get hot. And the bottom, I've unscrewed the door so you can see inside. If I can get it in the frame here. So what's in here comes with extra light bulbs on here. They're attached here. I think these are the original light bulbs. I, I tried putting a new one in. They both worked still. And inside there, I don't know well you can see it. The light bulb is over here. And the mirrors. There's a big mirror right here. I do have photos at the blog. So if you go to the blog entry that I'll link in the video description, you can see this whole thing taken apart. There's not a lot in there though. <laughs> Okay, and that's, I 
think that's about it before I... Well, let me mention this was released later. This is 1978 originally. And it does have a handle on the back as well for carrying it. And I think I mentioned everything. Now, I'm going... I already filmed the other parts of this video. I show five videos and four of them on the screen and one projection. I had a harder time with the projection just because the camera positioning it and the, the lighting is a little tough. I'll probably repeat some of the things I said here because I filmed that portion first. I wasn't sure what I was going to say in this part of the video. So that's coming up next. And the, the uh, microphone might be a little farther from me or I might not be facing it so the audio may not be great. And it's in the dark so you'll basically only be seeing the image. So that's next. Right, this is the device on with no tape in it. I'm going to show three of the movies on the screen viewer and then one on the projection. The projection is harder to film, so I didn't want to show more than one. So I'm going to put a, a Looney Tunes video in. I'll leave links to each different movie in the video description if you just want to see a specific one, but I'm only showing five of the many that I have. I'm going to reposition this to center it. And you do get some kind of darker spots over here, which could be from what I did to the mirror. <laughs> but I think it's more just the angle of the camera and the camera having enough light to catch everything. So let's just try to get it looking okay. And there's the focus. But I think I had it as sharp as it's going to get. So this one's Bugs Bunny in the lion's den. All right, so when I when I record or sorry when I play the movie, you're gonna hear the crank because it's it's the plastic clicking. So the only characters in this one are Bugs Bunny and Yosemite Sam. Appears to be dressed as a Roman, and the speed of the movie is however fast they turn this. So too fast, it makes it hard to see. Like, Whoa. but you know, so rewind if you miss something. That's all folks. I'm going to show a Sesame Street one and then three Disney. As I can do this in the dark here. This one is on my way to Sesame Street. See like straight on it might be too bright but I don't know if the angle's bad. You know, the light just varies so much. I'm at a bit of an angle. Of course, that's Bert and Ernie. It looks pretty good. Sesame Street are the only ones that aren't animation. I think everyone's familiar with Sesame Street. Show typically people with puppets.
And that would be the end. It's a rather short one. Well, most of them are short. Okay, next up should be Mickey's trailer. You see, I think at the angle, it's slightly less bright. The light kind of blinds it a bit or bleeds it. Try to do it as straight on as I can, though. Too fast. The uh, trailer's tumbling. And they caught it. And that would have been the end. Yeah, it's kind of hard to find the perfect speed. I don't know how well the camera can catch everything. Plus the quality of the tapes. I mean, they're just a few dollar tapes for kids. This is Winnie the Pooh and Tigger 2. Get the text to look better. This one actually has a few subtitles. I mean, none of them have audio, obviously, but you kind of have to just follow the story, make up your own dialogue if you want. Well, that's just part of the storybook that he's popping out of. It's there, but it's hard to, to read for me anyway. It's saying help. Just looking at the back of my camera is where, I'm, where it's really small. You just slow it down. It should look better in the video, I guess. So, all the Winnie the Pooh characters are rushing to help Tigger. Or no, sorry, Rue. Or little Rue. <laughs> I can't remember their names. I think it is Rue. I think Kangaroo or is. Oh, they are helping Tigger as well. Put them onto the words on the storybook. Everybody's happy, and that would be the end. All right, so I'm gonna to switch to the projection. You have to re reposition the camera, and place it on the floor, I believe, and I'm gonna show the rescuers. Okay, so I'm on the floor now. The device is sitting on the carpet. It's really tricky to try to film the projection part. When the crank is next to the little piece where the light comes out. So I have to try not to bounce it around. The you know the picture will just kind of shake if I if I'm not careful here. And getting the camera in a good spot is tough too. It's really neat on the same level, and you don't want to block the projection. Although you can see the left side screen is dark. I think that's a result of damaging the mirror slightly. I can see it fine on the wall, but it's a slightly less lighting. Which makes the you know gives the camera some difficulty since I am in the dark. So just gonna roll it. Does if you, I don't know if you can read it. Should be able to read it. I think it's clear. It says the rescuers Albatross Airlines. I think it's a really nice one. Rescuers might not be quite as well known as other Disney productions. I want to say they had a, a film in the 90s maybe. 
I'm more familiar with the original though. We have also have a rescuer's board game. I just always like these guys, probably because it's a good action in the animation. And this one looks really nice with them flying. And that's the end. So that's the Fisher Price Movie Theater. Thanks for watching.